Hey, what's up everybody? Penn here and welcome back to the channel. So in this video, I'm going to be going over my first impressions when dealing with a dual PC streaming and recording setup for content creation. All right, so the monitor in the middle is the, well, it's the television. It's the LG 42 um, C2 model. And then on the left, I have an LG 1440p, 144 hertz um, gaming monitor, but I use that as a secondary now. That's actually my streaming PC. And then the one in the middle is displaying my gaming PC slash workstation. All right, so just going to back up a bit, just so you can get a sense of it. T-Mobile 5G as a backup in the front, and then modem and router and ethernet switch towards the corner there. All right, so let's get closer. <clears throat> so this is going to be like the whole setup, just a general overview. Sure, MV7 Plus got a stand for this recently. Um, this just came in actually just yesterday, so I'm testing that out. Um, keyboard, and I'll try to leave a link in the description, but it's going to be the main ingredients. My PC part picker list, and what catcher card I'm using, and what's the mini PC. Additional wireless keyboard. And here's my RGB, um, you know, mouse that goes with it and all that. All right, <clears throat> now, I didn't fix the cable management in this yet because I honestly didn't need to. Um, it turns on, it works. So this is the i9-13900K with 64 gigs of DDR5 memory and an RTX 4090. So this is my main workstation and gaming PC. Got an AIO up top, fan in the back. And I got fans here, as you can see. This is a beast. Cool. All right. Now, <clears throat> for the setup, I'm rocking. Uh, let me move this. So this is the Rodecaster Pro 2. And I set up audio routing. I saw a um, nice tutorial breakdown by a YouTuber named Ashy. And he walked everyone through how to set this device up for a dual PC. He even has a single PC set up and an additional video in case you want to take this to the next level. I have everything set up to where I can hear audio through my headphones, through both computers and get the voice chat running and have everything tie into OBS so you all can hear it on stream. Some of you heard that example um, yesterday now, this is the capture card. This is the Avery Media um, HDMI 2.1. Uh, this is their latest external capture card. And how I have it set up, I have the USB Type-C going all the way into the mini PC, which is here, USB 4 front port. Then the other USB 4 is hooked up to the Rodecaster. And that's in um, slot one. Then I have the HDMI cable provided by Avra Media going from the HDMI in on the capture card and going to one of the HDMIs in my graphics card, which is the RTX 4090. And that's how I'm getting a display. So let's see. The mini PC right here. I have an external Samsung T7 500 gig SSD hooked up to it. Uh, got, got the HDMI for my secondary monitor. Got a camera plug back here, Ethernet. <clears throat> and that's essentially it. I got one more available port, but essentially 
It's just going to be for recording purposes and live streaming. But I'm simply using this device as part of a dual streaming setup. So this will not be used for gaming. It will not be used for watching movies or TV shows. However, you're able to multitask with this. So when I'm not recording or live streaming, while I'm gaming, I can pull up YouTube. I can watch a, a podcast, watch me some videos on the side, listen to music. I will do it occasionally for that. But mainly, I'm using this for content curation. So let's actually go over that a bit. Um, so I'm going to show you what I did. I'm bringing up the NVIDIA control panel. <clears throat> Got G-Sync turned off at the moment. So where it says AVT, that's the capture card. So the resolution is under PC. You see 4K, 3840 by 2160. And it's 144 hertz. And Windows reads it as a display. It will be display three in this case. And everything's here. That's my main monitor. And then this is my secondary monitor right here. <clears throat> now, this would be over on the streaming PC. I'll show that real quick. And I'm doing this with one hand here. But AMD Ryzen 9 7940 HS with the Radeon 780 graphics card. All right. I'm going to go to my memory. And it is 32 gigs of DDR5 running at 5600. So that's pretty cool. And the GPU, once again, the AMD Radeon 780. <clears throat> Two gigs of dedicated memory. Shared memory is pretty much 14.9. And then they got a separate GPU memory of 16.9. Mainly, I'm looking at the dedicated memory. So you can't push this like a NVIDIA 4090 or 4080, for example, or even a 3080. It just doesn't have that type of capabilities in this type of system. All right, so that's generally it. You have a taste of the setup. It's not the best cable management wise. I know that. But now I'm going to get into my OBS settings and discuss that because that is critical. All right, so we're in the second part. Now, keep in mind, I'm just recording this off of my cell phone with one hand. So, um, but I'll try to show y'all what I'm talking about. So this is on the streaming PC. So this is OBS. All right, now, this is a lower end computer compared to the computers that I've built or purchased in the past. So there are some caveats and there are some things that needs to be adjusted. But for video, I have 3840 by 2160 at 30 frames. Um, this is just less intensive on the PC. Like I said, it's not really a capture card limitation. It's more of a OBS type of thing with this hardware because Avery Media's native software, ReCentral 4, can record 4K 60 frames easily at 100 megabits per second. So this is more of an OBS type of thing. So I lowered it from 60 to 30. 60 to 30. Um, output. So this is my recording tab. And I have a separate profile for live streaming. So I'm doing MKB. So just in case the file gets corrupted, it can get, um, you know, you can recover it. 
the video encoder man this is so important so check this out <clears throat> see that can focus there so svt av1 that's mainly is optimized for intel processors uh aom av1 that's open source free you can use that on amd and then you have amd hardware av1 so anytime where you see amd hardware that's using a graphics card now h.264 is going to be the most optimized when i did the h265 when i try to play it back in adobe premiere or vlc before i went to edit the file the file literally couldn't play because it said the computer did not support playing this codec that was strange to me only due to the fact that the matter was it's supported with this graphics card so i don't know if there's something that i need to additionally purchase but i don't have to do that on my intel and nvidia setup um I, I never came across that issue but honestly x264 uses the processor and this is a um a core and 16 thread cpu um this is pretty powerful for the price that you're paying you can record off of the graphics card or you you can record off the cpu there's just limits okay so as of right now i'm testing the cpu but I've tested all of, I tested AV1, H265, and this AV1 as well, along with X264. All right, so I'll press that. And then my rate control is CBR. Essentially, this is 150 megabits per second once it gets translated. And then I do need to do like a keyframe of two. Is that what YouTube prefers? All right. And then CPU, very fast, profile, baseline, then everything else default. And essentially, that's my recording settings. And this is all tied into OBS. Now I'm going to show you my live streaming stuff. And I'm going to wrap this up. All right, so I switched profiles. So I'm gonna go to settings here. And it's the same thing as the recording. I'm just using the streaming encode. Um, and I'll go to output. Okay. So on my live stream, uh, when I was playing uh, Black Ops 6 with a Semi 2 Tech and my homie Mel, I was using this video encoder. Sorry, the phone recorder is glitching out a bit. So the AMD hardware H.265 is decent when I did the 1440p live stream test. And AMD has decent encoders for you to content create with. I just don't believe it's better than the Intel and NVIDIA combo. In my experience and in my testing up to this point. But I've been trying out the different encoders on this thing, and I've been putting it through the ringer. You guys know I've been posting videos, live streams. I've used AMD hardware every one. This is in prime time only because it has like these flashing or these blinking color effect, which you can see it on a couple of my live stream examples. You can content create with it. It's, it's just... It looks odd when it's flashing like that. And then H.265 is probably going to be your best bet if you want to save on some space and you don't want a insanely high bit rate. And then you have AOM, AV1, SVT. Then you got X264, which you can live stream through the CPU as well. So you, you have options on AMD. It's not that you don't have options. It's are the options stable for what you want to do? You know, that's really what it comes down to. And what else? My settings for live streaming are CBR. That's what YouTube prefers. 12,500. 
two keyframe balance preset. If I go to quality, I get an encoder overload because that's too much on the encoder. So I have to do balance. This is all about testing trial and error. And then um, I'll exit here. Show speed test. This is critical when it comes to live streaming. Mini Troy, got Xfinity. <clears throat> and you always want to know what your numbers are when you're live streaming because you don't want to go too far because you want to leave some overhead, you know, for the other devices on your network and so that you can have an enjoyable online experience as well. And, you know, these are the numbers on the streaming PC and they look very similar to on the gaming side as well. So, yeah, so when you can get this app directly from the Microsoft Store or you can do a browser based speed test. I just like the app because it's quick and easy. That's all.